And this is going to be very close to this idea of marginal utility that we learned about in consumer theory. But now, now the numbers actually matter because this is an actual production that we observe rather than this kind of unobserved utility. You know, hopefully I've, I've said that enough times that, that we've um, kind of gotten that. So if we are producing um, with some levels of input, some level of inputs, say x1, x2, so that's the amount of, of input 1, the amount of input 2, and we increase input 1 by just a bit, and hold um, input 2 constant, how much will production change? This is the marginal product of good one, of input one. And if we wanted to write out what this was, this would be the change in y, or the change in x1, and that equals the production function at the old level of input one, plus how much we're changing it keeping the level of good 2 constant, minus the old level of production over the change in x1. And I, and I think you know where we're going to go once we start using um, calculus to do this. This looks a lot like a derivative here, but we're going to save that for next chapter. We're going to call this marginal product of x1, x2, and then we're going to put a little 1 here to indicate that it's with respect to, to input one. This is indicating it's about input one. So, in other words, NP x1, x2, and you put a two here, this would be the marginal product of the input two. So that's how, that's the notation that we're gonna use. And now we'd be changing the amount of input two if we're gonna calculate this. Oftentimes, what we end up kind of saying is that if we increase the amount of input um, by one, holding input two constant, and and that's okay. You know, oftentimes it's just kind of being lazy and kind of saying that. Really, we want that change in one needs to be like a, a small change um, in terms of like how much of good one we're using, because eventually we're going to think about this in, in terms of derivatives, and derivatives are small changes, right? So. Um, Keep that in mind as we're talking about it. It's, it's a small change in x1. It's having this effect on output, holding x2 constant. Even though sometimes you say, you know, we increase the amount of inputs of, of good one by one, that's the marginal product of good one, holding x2 constant. But it is a marginal change that, that we are talking about, a small change. So again, this is very similar to this idea of marginal utility that we saw way back in uh, chapter three or, or four is when we first started seeing uh, margin utility. The next concept we're going to talk about is the technical rate of, of substitution. And again, this is going to look very similar to a concept we learned about in utility maximization, which was the marginal rate of substitution. So again, just like we, we just did for um, the marginal product, imagine we're producing with some levels of input. some level of production and then you could call that y um, with some level of each input x1 x2 now imagine we decrease x1 
by a small amount. And then increase x2 in order to keep production constant. This is going to be the slope of an, the isocon, and this is what we're going to call the, the technical rate of substitution. Well, that doesn't work very well anymore. This is the slope of the isocon. We're going to call it the technical rate of substitution. TRS is, is what your book calls it in terms of an acronym. So what it's kind of doing is measuring the trade-off of the inputs in production. The trade-off between um, the two inputs of production. Let's quickly, you know, um, erase this board, and then we'll kind of, you know, we'll give out like an equation for how you calculate this. The change in production equals um, the marginal product of input one times the change in input one plus the marginal product of the two times the change of good two. And, and we're going to be decreasing the amount of, of input one and increasing the amount of good two. So the total overall um, so the total overall production doesn't change, right? That's the idea that, that we just revealed. Well then all we have to do is rearrange this, right? And and we're going to get um, the change in X2 over the change in x1 is going to be equal to the negative of the marginal product of good 1 over the marginal product of good 2. And this is what we're calling the technical rate of substitution. And notice this looks exactly like our, our marginal rate of substitution, this technical rate of substitution. We're just saying marginal, it's the ratio of marginal products as opposed to the ratio of margin utilities like it was before. But it's very, you know, really similar to that idea we saw before, which is applying to a slightly different setting. Okay, so let's now move on to uh, diminishing marginal products, or diminishing marginal technical rate of substitution. So I'll quickly erase this, and we can talk about those two concepts. A diminishing marginal product, which is going to be really similar to this assumption we made about diminishing mar marginal utility. So suppose we are producing um, with inputs, input levels x1, x2, and then we have x1 amount of, of input 1 and x2 amount of input 2. Um, and we increase the amount of input 1. So we know, so from mon monotonicity, we know that the production will increase Stay the same, but let's let's imagine that it's going to increase. But by how much is it going to increase? But by how much? When we make an assumption of diminishing marginal product, we're making an assumption by how much it changes. 
And what we're going to say is that as we increase the amount of inputs, holding the other input, you know, input of, of input one, but holding the amount of input two constant, as we increase the amount of input one, production or, or y, so output is going to go up, but it's going to go up at a decreasing rate. So we will often make an assumption marginal product. Increasing an input and holding others constant. So we're only changing one at a time here. Um, will, will increase production output, but at a decreasing rate. <coughs> so if we keep adding, let's hold x2 constant, let's keep on increasing the amount of input 1, production will keep on going up, but the amount it goes up as we successive, successively increase the amount of input 1 is getting smaller and smaller. So that's the idea here. All right, so now let's rush this and talk about this idea of diminishing marginal, um, sorry, diminishing technical rate of substitution, which is going to be really close um, to this idea of the MRS, diminishing marginal rate of substitution, that we learned about in, in consumer theory. So similar to this idea of diminishing uh, marginal product is, um, sorry, similar to the idea of diminishing marginal rate of substitution is the diminishing technical rate of substitution. So these are really similar concepts. Um, they're both about like, the slopes of, of the indifference curve for diminishing marginal rate of substitution, or the slope of the isoquant, um, which is the diminishing technical rate of substitution. So a similar idea to diminishing marginal rate of substitution. The idea here is as we increase input 1 and adjust uh, the amount of, of input 2 to keep production the same The technical rate of substitution declines. So essentially, the second is we're moving along the isoquant. Um, the slope and absolute value um, is decreasing. The idea here is the slope of the isoquant. Decreases in absolute value. It's negative, so that's why we're putting that um, a qualifier, this qualifier. Um, as we increase x1 on the i sum one. So this is just really, it's really similar to the marginal rate of substitution and, and how that was uh, falling as we moved along the indifference curve in absolute value. Okay, so now let's talk about this difference between uh, short run and long run, and we'll talk about this idea for terms of scale.